I'm going to be in Acts chapter 9. I'm going to be in Acts chapter 9. And I'm going to read Acts chapter 9 verses uh, 36 through 42. Amen. Amen. It said, Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts. Verse 37 says, In those days she became ill, and guess what happened? She died. And then they washed her and they laid her in an upper room. Now since Sida, since Lydia was, was near Joppa, the disciples hearing that Peter was there sent two men. Somebody say two men. Sent two men urging them, please come with us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him up to the upper room, and all the widows stood beside the bed, and they were weeping, and they were showing him the garments that Dorcas has made, had made while she was still with them. Verse 40 reads, but Peter put them all outside. <laughs> Sometimes you got to get people, put people out when God's getting ready to work. Sometimes Right. And it seems like 
as soon as I got into that emergency room, it was just like that. I was in a wheelchair and I was being whisked down the hallway and all I could see was, uh, was doors and people running and a doctor stood in front of me running alongside the wheelchair and introducing himself to me and telling me what was going on and because I, I, I didn't know what was going on at this time. I just knew by then my face began to feel numb. My face began to feel numb and my, my bottom lip began to, to tremble. Yeah. And my whole entire left side oh. was weak. Jesus. My God. But God said, yeah. you don't have to die. Yeah. God said, you don't have to die. So I kept telling myself, Tammy, this sickness would not be unto death. Right. I kept telling myself, Tammy, you're not going to die here because they took me from the wheelchair. They uh, the, the big, the cat scan. And I laid there at that cat scan and tears began to roll down my eyes and God just whispered, you ain't gotta die. You ain't gotta die here. So, so let me fast forward a little bit. Let me tell you about this scene that we opened up. We back in Joppa. We just left Mansfield, Texas. So now let me paint this picture. We're back in Joppa about 2,000 so years ago, okay? So now we are in Joppa. And the scene opens to this, uh, it, it, it's, it's a scene of mourning. Yeah. It's a scene of weeping. Yeah. You have this disciple woman yeah. named Dorcas. Uh -huh. Tabitha, this name means gazelle. This name means swift. Yeah. This main name moves that she was a woman about her business. She wasn't sitting back waiting on somebody to do something. She was busy about stuff. And this scene is, is, is grim because it opens with her dead body. See, we were, we were in Mansfield a few moments ago, but now we're in Joppa. So let me take your imagination back to this bedside of this dead disciple. And there were women all around the bed, and they were crying, and they were weeping, and they were mourning, and they were sad because this woman had done so much for them. She lived trade city and bibles uh, scholars go on to say that this is where Jonah was so aborted the ship to try to escape uh, to disobey the, the Lord's command to go uh, to Nineveh he didn't want to go where God told him to go and how many of us have been disobedient when you know God said go to the left but now I don't want to go over there God I don't want to go over to the south side of Fort Worth I don't want to go over there I'm going to go to Frisco and people mourning 
That lets you know that somebody cared about her. That lets you know that there was something important about this woman. What will people say about you when you're gone? Well, what will your disparity say? What, what, what will your generation say about you after you're gone? Will they weep and cry out? Or will they just be, well, he did what he did, she did what she did, and now she's gone. But these people laid at her bedside and they cried and they wept. And they remembered all the beautiful things she had done. Dorcas was a sore, she was a seamstress, so she had made beautiful garments of all these different colors. And when Peter uh, uh, gets there, uh, he, they're going to show him all these beautiful garments that she had made for him, for them. So what will people say, have to say about you when you cross over to the other side? Will all your works be not for not? Jesus. Huh? Are you doing it for the right reasons? Are you doing it just for show? Really? See, because God knows the difference. Yeah. He knows the difference. He knows you really, really love the people. Do you just love the people in a certain neighborhood? Do you just love the people with a certain zip code? Do you just love the people with a certain car? That's it. That's the car. Do you just love the people that drive a Tesla? Or do you just love the people who have a Mercedes Benz? Or can you love the people that's on the bus? Morning that we gotta open up our mouths. 
so people can know about the God that we serve. <laughs> We got to open up our mouths about the God that we serve. We can show up for church and been in church all my life, but have you told anybody about him? Come on, come on, man. Have you shared what he's done for you? Or are you just showing up out of habit and ritual and tradition? So there's no phones, no, no DMs, but somebody heard that Peter was nearby. Somebody was talking about the Lord. Somebody was talking about the healings that Peter was doing over this town that was about 10 miles away. So these two men, somebody say two men, men. hurried their way to live. I want to ask you this morning, what about your friends? What about your friends? I think it was, who had that song for me? TLC. What about your friends? Yes. Will they let you know? Yeah. So these two men, what about your friends? Because if you are in a place where you are dead or about to die, or your friends going to run, walk, grab, get on a donkey and go 10 miles for you, or are they going to get on Facebook and talk about you? Are they going to get on Instagram and talk about you? But these two men went 10 Peter 
why? Because Peter was all uh, 10 miles away. And Peter was over there. He had already healed Aeneas. A man over there had been in his bed for eight years. Lame. Mm -hmm. that's right, that's right. But they heard that Peter had done great things over there. So let us go get Peter. Yeah. <laughs> we, we heard about Peter. So let us go see if Peter can help us out with our sister. Amen. See, man of God, she should be your sister first. Come on now. Shoot, man. She, she, she's supposed to be your sister first. Jesus. Woman of God, if he ain't treating you like a sister, he ain't for you. Amen. And I said what I said, and I'm going back to my prayer. He, he, he ought to treat you like his sister first. Huh? So they send over to this next town. As I said, it's about 10 to 12 miles away. They send over and they said, Peter, come with us. And Peter said, verse 39 said, so Peter rose and he went with them. Didn't ask no questions. How much is the pain? What's the honorarium? Oh, the TV camera's gonna be there to see me do this miracle. You know, some people ain't gonna wanna move unless it's something in it for them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm glad you came. I'm, I'm glad y'all here. See, some people wanna know what am I gonna get out of it if I come over there? See, that 10 to 12 miles. Like I said, we ain't gonna be in a Tesla. We're not gonna be in the Cadillac. We're gonna be on a donkey or we're gonna be by foot. So what's gonna be in it for me? He didn't say that. Come on, man. He didn't ask what was gonna be in it for him. They said the two men went over. Uh huh. Yes, Lord. Yes, he did. Come on. Thank you. God bless you. I think this is the most energy I've exerted since I got out of the hospital, so bear with me. But I'm all right. I ain't getting ready to have a heart attack, Anissa, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So Peter rose and went with him. And when he arrived, they took him to that upper room. And all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing him these tunics and these clothes and these garments that darkness had made for them while she was yet alive. They took it to this upper room and these women, like I said, when I opened this text, this was a grim scene. We opened up to a room and a dead body and a bunch of crying women. This was, a, this was a sad scene that we opened up with. So now, this is where we are. These women were mourning. They were outwardly grieving and inside they were mourning. And as a certified grief educator, I'm all too well acquainted with grief and the effects of grief. That's what I do for a living. So I'm all too aware of the effects of grief and mourning. And as I said, well, how will your prosperity, uh, posterity, I'm sorry, recall you um, when you cross over to the other side? What will your future generations have to say about you? And in verse 40, 40 is the part I like. They might tell y'all a little bit about my personality. <laughs> Verse 40. But Peter put them all outside. Yeah. I love oh, you. I <laughs> Peter put them all outside. And then he knelt down and prayed and turned to the body. He said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes when she saw Peter. Everybody can't be in the room all the time. That's all I'm going to say right there. Everybody can't be in the room all the time. I know that's your group.
glory to God. That's the part I like right there. Yeah, That's the part I like. I'm telling you, he had to put everybody out to work. When he's doing his work, let him have his way. Have your way in me, God. My God. So Peter begins to pray. He puts everybody out. Peter spoke to what appeared dead. Hey. Over 
one, one uh, 38 something or another. I don't know. Oh, but God, the people that needed to know at that time, they knew. And my phone started ding, ding, ding. People started, I love you, is what one of them said. What I'm saying, I'm praying for you. So I knew that the word had gotten out. Yeah. Just like the people heard about Peter was here, the word had gotten out. Because people knew that I was in a dire situation. So everybody didn't know. Everybody didn't need to know because somebody might have been hoping I didn't make it through. I don't know. Somebody might have been hoping, well, I, 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 I guess this is it for her. But the right people knew. I told my sister this morning, she said, it's so good to see you. I said, oh, sister, you don't even know this Sunday. Come on, man. Ooh, you yeah. heard me saying it's better to be seen than viewed. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Nobody didn't have to look down on me, Pastor Vance. Y'all didn't have to stand and hold my husband's hand and walk into a casket this weekend. Yeah. Because God showed up like that in Mansfield. And he said, it ain't got to die. I did not have a stroke, thank God. Thank you, Jesus. I did not have a heart attack. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And by the way, they said my heart is pumping just fine. But it is well. So I had the CT. I had an MRI. I had a stress test. I had a run on a treadmill. I had blood work throughout the night. They were coming in, taking my vitals. Some nights I lay there in tears. Because I see that machine go up, then it come back down. I get excited. Then the next day, it'd be right back up again. God told me, he said, not today. <laughs> I said, God, for you I live. And for you I die. But God, I ain't ready. See, I have to be honest. You know, some of our seniors, they're ready to go see their master. They're ready to go see their maker. But I'm ready for my husband to fully retire because we got to go to Rome first. We got to go to Greece first. So I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, Paulette. I wasn't ready, Dawson. There's a place we want to go. We want to go to the Maldives. There's a place because we love to travel. And so he's, he's, he's retired twice. Huh? But he's got one more he's working on. We got some stuff in the plans. God's doing some stuff. So I said, God, I can't die just yet because I want to go see the pyramids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go see him too. We'll do a couple trips. Yeah. I said, I, it's the thing I want to do. I said, I ain't ready to go just yet. Yeah. So one night. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. My guest had left. The Lord had sent the Calvary. Yeah. Lady told me, she said, Are you some sort of celebrity? I said, No. I said, I'm just loved. People came in and out all day. People were on their way out of town. My prayer partner, Dr. Reed, and her husband were supposed to be in San Antonio or Houston or somewhere. They put everything off to come and sit with me and my husband that entire morning. I was in the emergency room from like 8.30 that morning till about 6 o'clock that evening. They stayed with us just about the entire time. So when the lady asked me, was I a celebrity, Loretta, I told her no. I'm no celebrity, I'm just loved. Yeah. And after all of my guests had left me, I lay there in the bed that night. And them, let me hand off, Miss Gill. Thank you. These are my beds from the hospital, y'all. See, God always got a purpose for something, right? Yeah. 
My husband probably wondered why she had these sitting on the couch. <laughs> they had me uh, in a very nice, sweet They had just put up at Mansfield Methodist a new wing. Yeah, yeah. And it's supposed to be an ICU suite, but they were just using it for overflow. So God had already given me favor by putting me in a, in a brand new suite. Come on, Paulette. <laughs> I was in a brand new suite at the hospital. Come on. And uh, everybody had left that night. And I lay there in the dark. And mind you, when you're in the hospital, you don't go to sleep. You go to get well. And then you go home to rest. And my husband will tell you the last several days, that's all I've done. And because he's the husband that he is, that's what he's allowed me to do. Uh, he's cooked, he's clean, he's washed and folded. <laughs> Amen. So he's allowed me to do what the doctor ordered, that was rest. Pastor Vance and Lady Vance were praying. We were texting while I was still in the hospital. And he said, no, woman of God, you're going to be all right. Yes. You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to be there. I told him, I said, in all transparency, I said, I don't know if I'll be able to make it. I'm not, I'm not sure. No, you're going to be all right. Y'all know he's, he's real passionate. No, yes. woman of God, you're going to be all right. Yes. <laughs> he did, I, did I do good with your first day to you? Yes. Yeah, woman of God, you're going to be all right. Yes. And uh, I believe that I would, but I'm, I always try to do things decent and order, right? Yes. And so I was uh, going to suggest... You know, if I wasn't going to make it, I, I know a bunch of women preachers that could get up here and do what they do, you know? Amen. But as we see, God had a plan. Yes. And here I am. Thank you. Amen. So it don't have to die, y'all. So I lay there in that bed, and um, I uh, began to have a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> And that's when I said, I told him, I said, Lord, I, I told you, and I'm just going to pray and ask you to let this sickness not be to death. Let me right. turn my face to the wall. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Oh, Hallelujah. Y'all, they said I was a, a fall risk. This is my fall risk thing. But God said, I ain't going to let you fall. Amen. Said, he who is able to keep us from falling, my vain. Who, who, who is able to keep us yeah. from falling, yeah. sister? Amen. Who is able to keep us from falling? So he said, no, you're not going to fall. Yeah. <laughs> and then they gave me this red one. And y'all know this is my favorite color. And this one said, this is my allergy uh, yeah. alert. I said, well, y'all said this is my, my, my allergy alert. But I said, this is for the blood of Jesus. Yeah. This red is for the blood of Jesus that's covering me. While I sit there and I watch my blood pressure go to stroke level, this is for the blood of Jesus that covered me while I was there. No, 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 no. I ain't getting ready to die, but here comes the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus had me covered, y'all. And this one right here, this was uh, the band that they used to admit me into the hospital. And when the nurse came around, he said, Miss Dozier, he said, uh, I need you. I'm standing outside my room. He said, I need you to go back into your room. He said, you're the fall rigs. You ain't supposed to be up. <laughs> I said, okay, so I, I mind what the people told me to do, right? And so I didn't go lay down. I wouldn't sit down. Yeah. And I told the Lord, they need a, uh, to invent another band. They need a band to say she's out of here. Because cause I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you that tomorrow around this time, that tomorrow around this time, I'm going to be walking out the door after all the visitors came to see about me, after everybody was texting, after everybody was pouring love onto me, after God had done what he needed to do in regulating my blood pressure and verifying that there was no stroke and there was no heart attack and, and, and letting the doctors know what was really Over to the other side of the city, back over to Grand Prairie, Texas. 
I want to leave this with you, Southside. And I look into this audience and I see some familiar faces that I have ministered with before several years ago. And they have reached out to me on Messenger and said, you're going to be in my church tomorrow. So it's good when your character precedes you. You know, people know about Dorcas. They love Dorcas. So it's good when people know. And they know how you treat people. Amen. And so as we head over to the other side of the city, I want to remind you. That it don't have to die. Yes. It can still live. Yes. All you need to do is get into your mind. What it is that's about dead. What is it that you're struggling with? Get that thing in your mind. And say, God, I don't want it to die. Mm -hmm. And then do the work. Yes. And watch God resurrect that thing. Amen. 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 This is God's word for his people on this morning. Men and women of God, it don't have to die. It don't have to die. God is faithful. It don't have to die. All you have to do is trust him in the midnight hour. All you got to do is trust and believe that God is able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly, but more than we could ever ask, think or imagine, according to the power that works within us. Amen.